That's Sigma 85mm 1.4 art lens. I bought it 10 months ago when I was completely broke. I had maybe in my bank account around 200-300 euros and that lens cost around 1.2 thousand. All my friends called me crazy back then. But I don't regret a single penny spent on that lens. The first thing that really worried me with that lens is the size. That is not the size of 1.4. Usually they are much bigger and chunkier. But of course there is a catch. That lens has a lot of distortion. But luckily Sony has a setting that automatically corrects the distortion of lenses, the native lenses. But Sigma obviously has some deal with Sony and it's using the same technology. By default the setting is turned off, so go in the Sony menu, turn on the lens distortion to ON. Now let's check a couple of portrait videos during the day, so you can see the bokeh, you can see the focus, how it works, and you can see the skin colors, and in general the colors of the lens. You call me a saint, but you know I'm a stranger, a willing and able to do what you want. You think I'm a thinker, but I'm just a singer, a busy and pretty, just making believe. Boy, I'm falling, I'm falling, I'm falling, I'm falling, I'm falling. Down to obscurity, don't let me ever be this alone. I'm falling, I'm falling, I'm falling, I'm falling, I'm falling. Shouldn't be trusting me, I could be making it all up, you know. Even in challenging conditions, the focusing works amazing. We shot with smoke grenades and the model was covered with smoke and her face was not all the time visible and still that lens didn't focus hunt. Of course, that is the Sony technology, but the Sony technology paired with that lens, mm, it's masterpiece. In 99% of the time, the focusing works without any issues. There is one huge issue for me with the focusing, but it's more like an edge case, but for a lot of wedding videographers can be a huge issue. I'll check the issues with that lens at the end of the video. So first we speak about the good sides and after that we'll speak about the bad sides. What really surprised me about the lens after working with it for a couple of months was the sharpness. The bokeh is very beautiful in general, but the sharpness the subject has, combined with the bokeh, it's what brings it to the next level. the lens mounted on a gimbal and the footage is buttery smooth. But sometimes I shoot with it handheld and surprisingly the image is quite stable. The lens doesn't have image stabilization, but the Sony sensor stabilization is strong enough to compensate a lot of the jitters you introduce. You still have to bend your knees, do the ninja walk, be very careful and concentrated how you film. And after that you add the warp stabilizer on post-production, 
the footage is buttery smooth as well. Not perfect like a gimbal, but it's quite good. Check those results. Next we have the low light performance at night, that lens is a beast, especially the bokeh. The bokeh of the street lights are shining so nicely and they're nice and circular. Just check the footage and you'll see what I've done. Cause there is no one other than me that can make you feel the way you feel when I hold you. I think I said enough. We checked the day, we checked the night, but we didn't check the sunset. Here is some sunset footage. We came to the product shots. That lens is so creamy and separates your product from the background so beautifully that no matter do you have some very crowded scene with a lot of trash around, if you do the right composition, the product will look awesome. Of course, I did a couple of rookie mistakes with that lens. When you have the power of 1.4, you feel like a Jedi that wants all the time to use 1.4, which is not recommended when you film client videos. It's better to step up that lens to at least 2.2, 2.8, so everything is in focus. Because when you look the small screen on the camera, everything looks in focus, but when you put it on the big screen and you see that the label is in focus, but the product is not on focus. And uh, I had a couple of videos like that. The lens has two huge issues. The first one is the minimal focusing distance. With that lens is around 85 to 90 centimeters. So here is the lens and 85 is somewhere around here. So you're really far away from the subject. And very often when I film something, I can, I wanna come a bit closer, like to do mostly a macro shot, but that lens doesn't allow me that. I had other 85 millimeters that could come much closer to the subject and do mostly a macro shot, but not that one. There is a workaround though. I programmed that button to go in crop mode. When you go in crop mode on your Sony camera, you don't lose video quality. You lose photo quality, but you will not use video quality. So that 85 millimeters is converted to, to around 125, 130 millimeters when it's in crop mode. Especially if you're a wedding videographer, all those wedding ring photos or videos with that lens will be challenging. You still can work it out, but from personal experience, when you're on a set and you want to get a close-up shot, it's really annoying. Of course, you can record 4K after a zoom it manually, but still not, not ideal. You want your gear to perform, and especially when you're in stressful environment, you want to take the shot like that, not to sweat in front of the client and wonder how to take that shot. The second issue is the sun flaring. That lens flares a lot, especially when it's pointed at the sun, and the image is getting quite faded. Never purchase that lens if you're broke and you don't have enough money. It will really hit the budget. When you don't have 5 euros, 5 euros can be a fortune. So in the beginning of 2022, I had a couple of client projects agreed, kind of agreed. But to be able to execute the client projects, I had to update all my gear, which translates into thousands of euros. And when you don't have them in your bank account, you have to borrow money. So I borrowed a couple of thousands to be able to buy all the equipment and execute the projects. And guess what happened? One day before the first project, I got COVID and we had to cancel everything. When I had to call the client and tell him that, hey man, I have COVID, I was like, fuck, I'm fired. 
Oh, deliver. Every single time I record a video, Amazon will hit the best moment. So the situation was really uncomfortable because they arranged a whole warehouse, they arranged a bunch of people, and I was the one who ruined the whole plan. I was like, fuck, I'm fired, they'll find somebody else. Luckily for me, they managed to postpone everything, but those couple of weeks were so stressful because I didn't know we managed to return all the money I borrowed from other people to be able to buy all the gear to execute the project. If I had to go back in time and take the decision to buy it or not to buy it, 110% I would buy it again. Thank you for watching, see you next time, bye!